Mark Gorman took over the chair of Creative Edinburgh last autumn. He's leading the group of Scottish companies that have come to Ontario, in part to mean similar businesses in Canada, in part to learn how the sector promotes itself. Interactive Ontario is a not-for-profit industry organisation committed to the growth of the sector in Ontario. It's learned a lot over the past 11 years about promoting the sector, and all done on a shoestring. Mark Gorman wants to find out more for himself. So yes, uh, as you mentioned, our organization was started about 11 years ago. Um, we have about 300 different members and our members are companies as opposed to individuals. Uh, our companies range in size from sole proprietors all the way up to large multinational corporations that are all based in Ontario. Uh, the majority, however, are companies of 10 people or less. So about three quarters of our people are actually quite small businesses. Um, the, uh, we cover a bunch of different sectors, everything from games to e-learning to web content, advertising. So it is sometimes a bit of a challenge to try to bring those groups together and to, uh, to find commonalities of interest. However, uh, you know, the organization started very organically of a bunch of different people in the industry wanting to get together and to try to pool resources and to try to do things together. Mark, well, Creative Edinburgh has been going for perhaps about uh, 18 months now. So are there lessons that you feel that you can learn from the Ontarian experience? Yeah, definitely. Well, there's, there's, there's the challenges of attracting members and keeping them and making sure they're getting value from, from the organisation and, and from the relationships. Um, but it, it, it seems like they're quite similar uh, mm. models, really. Um, ours is much more uh, about individual members, I think, more than corporate members, if, if you want to call them that sort of thing. We, we have more freelancers, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, and more uh, single self-employed companies uh, in, in, as part of the group. Uh, so we're not as nearly as established and it's certainly not as corporate as yours, mm -hmm. but I think definitely we're heading in the right direction. We've got some really good things out of the conversation. Sure, and it's, yeah, I was going to say it's pretty impressive to me that you know in 18 months you've got almost 600, 600 members. Yeah. Uh, you know, my organization's been around for over a decade and we have 300 members. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that's, uh, you're covering a broader group of uh, cultural sectors, but I think that's it's a much impressive. wider, and, and that's been quite interesting actually from the conversations we had in Toronto yesterday with uh, the development organization, uh, because one of the other similarities I think that we're seeing here is, this, is, is the breakdown in silos uh, between one set of creative industries, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one sector and another, and, and bringing them all together and having a real melting pot. A question to both of you, which is, do you feel there are actually grounds for, a room for collaboration in the future? Sure, well, I mean, definitely one of the things is to just be able to share information and learn about what, you know, best practices, and you are mentioning mm -hmm. about some of the same challenges that we're facing, and to be able to share that information, so that's definitely a, a, a great starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, but our members will have the same kinds of challenges. There'll be certain local issues, but some of the issues that our members would be facing, like access to financing, would be the same types of challenges Absolutely. that you're having. Uh, and to be able to help our members uh, meet potential collaborators, people that have skill sets that they may not have, uh, and for us to act as an intermediary to sort of to help be able to introduce those people, mm -hmm. and to, because we'll understand our members, you'll understand mm -hmm. your members, and find sure. ways to work together. I think there's definitely ways to work together that way. That, well, there, there's practical challenges and financial challenges across in the Atlantic for a start. Sure. But uh, I, I wonder maybe, I'm not sure whether individually the members would benefit directly from a collaboration. Perhaps it's actually the organisations might be able to help one another more effectively. Sure. Yeah, and I think it could be both. And you're right, obviously bringing a group of, uh, you know, five or ten companies across the pond is going to be expensive. Yeah. Uh, so you need to make sure that it's going to be valuable to them and you yeah. need to figure out who's going to be financing the cost of that trip uh, or the different parts of the cost of that trip. And but, who goes uh, on the trip. <laughs> yeah, and who's going to be going on the trip for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think that uh, you know one of the great things about internet, Skype and email and those yeah. types of things is that it makes it easier to communicate mm. uh, across those areas and then when there are opportunities to work together then you can actually you know, uh, yeah. execute against those opportunities in a much easier way.